My name is Marie Desenza, and I'm a preconception and prenatal genetic counselor here at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Today, we'll be reviewing some information about pre-implantation genetic screening, or what we call PGS. This is a highly specialized test designed to look at the chromosomes of an embryo. But before we get too far into details, let's take a step back. Chromosomes are bundles of tightly coiled DNA located inside almost every cell in our body. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes numbered 1 to 22, plus our sex chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes, and males have one X and one Y chromosome. Embryos can have missing or extra copies of their chromosomes, and the chance for these changes increases with maternal age. An example of a chromosome change is Down syndrome, also known most times as trisomy 21, which signifies that three copies of chromosome 21 are present, rather than the two copies that are normally present. We know that missing or extra copies of chromosomes in an embryo can increase the chance for miscarriage or the chance for an abnormal pregnancy. The purpose of PGS is to examine the genetic information of an embryo to identify embryos that have the correct number of chromosomes. Choosing to implant only embryos with the correct number of chromosomes may help to increase the chance for implantation and reduce the chance for miscarriage. PGS is designed to look for extra or missing chromosomes PGS does not screen for single gene conditions like cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy. PGS can be performed for several different reasons, including advanced maternal age, multiple unsuccessful IVF cycles, recurrent pregnancy loss, a prior pregnancy with a chromosome abnormality, or patient choice. In order to do PGS testing, IVF must first be performed. Once the embryos have formed, our skilled embryologists help them to grow in culture. On day five of development, there are two different populations of cells. Cells that would form the fetus and cells that would contribute to the embryonic part of the placenta. An embryologist will use a small tool on the fifth or sixth day to remove a few cells, usually three to five, from the population that will form the placenta. This is called a biopsy. There is evidence that most of the time, the placental cells are almost identical to the cells that will develop into the fetus. We are not removing cells that will form any part of the fetus itself. There is a chance that the cells removed do not completely represent the genetic information of a future pregnancy itself. A PGS normal embryo does not guarantee a healthy pregnancy. These topics will be discussed in greater detail upon consultation with a genetic counselor. The embryos themselves are frozen immediately after biopsy and remain frozen at the hospital for possible future transfer. Once a biopsy samples arrive at the PGS testing lab, technicians make millions of copies of DNA to use for testing. Results are received one to two weeks after the embryo biopsy. An IVF physician will call you to review your results. Afterwards, if you have embryos suitable for transfer, you'll work with your IVF care team to prepare for an embryo transfer. Upon confirmation of a normally growing pregnancy, you will transfer your care to an obstetrician who will review screening options during your pregnancy, including blood work and ultrasound. PGS may not be right for everyone. If you'd like to discuss the benefits and limitations of this testing in greater detail, ask your IVF team to refer you for a genetic consultation. PGS is still considered experimental by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine and is not considered national standard of care.